put an enclosure. There's some work to it. I don't really want to do a video on how to do that. Uh, although this thing will put out 120 amps for an hour. I've tested it yeah. uh, at the full 12.8. Yeah, um, it's pretty serious. And yeah. it, it's a pretty serious DC to DC converter. Most people don't need that much. We're talking about doing a um, sort of reduced set speedster. Mm -hmm. um, we learned a lot the first time. We've had a lot of people want a speedster that they can just buy. They don't, they don't uh, and you know, we advocate you building your own electric car. Right, we do. Out of the car you, you like, right. you want a Carmen Ghia or, or an Audi. Uh, what, what's your dream car? Take it and convert it and, and use open source, readily available components. Right. Exactly. That's, that's our theme. No proprietary drivetrains, mm -hmm. no proprietary battery modules. We're not looking to be serfs on somebody's new fiefdom. Right, exactly. Uh, Nothing, circa no secrets. 2009. Yeah. Um, you know, you ought to be able to buy the components, convert them. That's easy for me to say. I'm, re <laughs> I'm retired, as my kid told his classmates in school. My dad uh, had a business, but he sold it. Now he's retarded. Retarded, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm retarded. So it's easy for me to say I got plenty of time. Would you believe there are people out there with careers and families who just because of the amount of time devoted to that do not see themselves spending six months in a garage working on a car. <laughs> I couldn't imagine. I don't understand this. Where do these What's people wrong with people? Off? <laughs> What's so important about a career and a family? Yeah, you can't go and you know, lay on your back for a few months and <laughs> right. work on a car. <laughs> well, it happens. So they're wanting to buy a Speedster. We're talking to some of the uh, Speedster replica manufacturers and going through a lot of what we did uh, was overkill, which is right. always appropriate, but it's cumulatively it's, expensive. It's very expensive, yeah. If you get the very best component for everything you do, the, the neat thing is that sometimes you can kind of mess up the whole design and the components will get together right. and decide to work <laughs> with that. That's right. <laughs> Just get out of the way. <laughs> If you don't know what you're doing, get a bigger one. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> my <be> good. <laughs> philosophy. However, we learned a lot of what we were doing, and it's clear that um, we don't need all we were don't doing. Don't have to do all of that. Yeah. Uh, you don't really need 100 miles in a Speedster. You don't need that much batteries. Uh, there's some better drivetrains that have come out. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, there's um, some less expensive components and techniques. Um, we can do a cleaner install that's more manufacturable mm -hmm. and at a much less cost. Right. I think uh, an, at least an under $50,000 um, Speedster ready-made uh, could be done. Uh, we might be able to get it down under forty-five. Might, might be able to, yeah. So one of the things I've been looking at is uh, DC to DC converters. I've told you about the IOTA and my great fondness for this. I've found two others that are low cost, they're low output too, but they're low cost and perform very well and you can use them even without a battery. Now, of course, you, you have to have your traction battery. The DC to DC converter basically takes your traction battery voltage, 300 volts, 375 volts, 120 volts, 100 volts, whatever you're running a car on, and converts it to we call it 12 volts, it's, it's over 13, 13 volts, volts yeah. to run your normal automotive electric thing, your electric windows, your headlights, your turn signals, your yeah. backup light. Yeah. All I your, don't care how basic the yeah. car, you've got these things, yeah, no horn. Yeah. They're required by law. Yeah. <laughs> so, and they traditionally run on 12 volts. So we need a supply of 12 volts. If you just tap off of 12 volts of your battery pack, in the first place, you've created a, a leak to ground. Right. You don't want your traction pack uh, to touch ground on the car at any point, because then if you touch one of the cells and part of the car, you've completed a circuit and killed yourself. So you have to have an isolated converter. That'll con uh, the other thing is then that'll unbalance your pack. You're, right. you're running your 12-volt off one cell and the whole pack for the rest of it, and it, it, it's yeah. a nightmare. So you need a little uh, device to pro provide this 12 volts. I've got two here that I like, 
And the good news is they're cheap. And I've been looking for a year. And, uh, and sometimes uh, you're just looking in the wrong place. These are pretty low output devices. Um, the Sure Power is rated at uh, 30 amps output at 13 and a half volts. And this is a Kelly HZ1 series. Okay. And it's rated at 13 and a half volts, uh, 25 amps. All right. Now that sounds a little low. Most cars today have what a 75, 90 the, amp oh, alternator. Yeah. What are they? Probably around that range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to up to 100 or so, even more. And you have a battery that'll put out eight, nine hundred cranking amps at mm -hmm. some point. Well, we're not going to crank anything. We don't have a big engine we need to start. We just need to run the radio. Right. <laughs> the headlights. Um, but it can add up. Um, I don't, I guess I think these little 25, 30 amp things are not quite enough to really run a Mini Cooper or something. No, probably not. The Speedster, but, they probably But with could. limited accessories and uh, need, yeah. We could go to a bigger one or two of them mm -hmm. and do it. Mm -hmm. we could. The problem is a little motorcycle battery is a lot cheaper than these are. So you take right, one right. of these and a battery to use as a buffer, just a little AGM sealed motorcycle battery, yep, and you put them together and you've got a 12 volt electrical system that'll work fine. Mm -hmm. You could use two of these if weight and size are an issue. Uh, and for some cars, you, you might get away with one of them. But 25, 30 amps is kind of the thing. This one, the Sure Power, I like this unit. We're not gonna use it for a project right. probably. And I'll tell you a little bit about that. It comes in a great uh, thinned heat sink. Uh, it's a sealed unit potted module. Uh, this is an American manufacturer and quite experienced. Um, th this is basically what they use in the gym. Right. Um, what was that? Global Electric Motor Car. Global Electric Motor Car. Uh, we played with those. Um, the Ford Think, the Zen uses it. Um, they're a little hard to find. I did find one vendor that sold them, um, ASE Supply, right. um, $211. It's rated at 30 amps. It's a great little sealed unit. It's got a douche plug. Um, you've heard of douche bags. Well, there's actually <laughs> a, a thing called a douche plug that... Um, and this is one of them. It's kind of weatherproof, has a bunch of wires, and I really don't like it. Okay. <laughs> and the reason is you get it in a bag. You get to assemble it. You've got to solder the pins uh, on, insert the pins. In, yeah. It makes a great little weather uh, tight connection. The reason it has it is this thing has got kind of an interesting circuit. You have your battery plus and minus in, but then you have several outputs. You have okay. two unswitched uh, 12 volt outputs that are really over 13 volts. And then you have two um, switched outputs. Okay. And you also have an input, three grounds, and, uh, and an ignition input. Right. So you can hook this up to your traction packs, take the unswitched output, run it to your ignition switch, run that back in as your switch to the unit, right. And that'll switch the switched outputs that you can run. So you've got two basic sources here, unswitched for your ignition, right. but also for like your uh, stereo, that, so it doesn't lose the memory of your right. station presets and so forth. Sometimes you have a clock, little things Close. like that. Yeah. And then the switched ones that you want to go to your contactor and so mm -hmm. forth um, would work off the ignition. So I like that design. It's kind of an all-one mm -hmm. unit. You don't need a battery with it. It it uh, And it does as it advertises. This thing will put out 30 amps. They say 30 amps, they mean 30 amps. Great voltage regulation right up to 35, 30 amps. By the way, don't try 35 amps. It <laughs> crashes and burns hugely. <laughs> this thing Nothing. crumples like a cheap tent. <laughs> I can't fault them. They said 30 amps. Yeah. What, were <laughs> what were you doing? The other neat thing about it is a pretty wide voltage range. This is a 96 volt unit. It'll go up to 130 volts, mm -hmm. but we tested it. It goes down to 55 volts. Right. Yep. 
and yeah, still produces still the power at the same voltage and at the same power levels. About 82% efficient. It's a great little unit. It's very inexpensive at uh, 211 bucks for the whole thing. It's very well made. I love this uh, finned uh, um, case yeah, that's on it. Nice. It's potted. Yeah. Uh, you can put this thing under water mm -hmm. and it'll work just fine. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a nice unit. Uh, so this is, this is cool. Sure Power model um, uh, 71030i. All right. <laughs> and it's 211 bucks. And it, it's good stuff. That's a, a great little thing. This one is our Chinese uh, version of the same thing. And I would love to report 